Hey, just to make it quick, I made a new tool. You can find it at duckify.hoon.me and it's a web-based converter tool that allows you to turn bad USB scripts into Arduino sketches that run on the DigiSpark. So you no longer have to mess around with the DigiSpark programming language, but you can simply use your existing Ducky scripts or use scripts that you can find online. And it gets even better because Duckify supports a variety of different keyboard layouts, including those for macOS. So all the funny characters that you can type on your keyboard are supported right out of the box. You can find all the necessary documentation by clicking on Docs. But if you're new to the game of bad USBs, keep watching because I will now go over the entire process of using this tool in detail. I hope you enjoy it. Bad USBs are kind of crazy. This is an unlocked computer, and this is all it takes to take control over it. Yeah, to be fair, I just had it open a website for me and put it in full screen, but it could just as well install malware or steal your data in the same amount of time. And if you want to learn more about bad USBs, I actually made an online course that you can check out, but more on that, including a discount at the end of the video. So what are we talking about here? This is a DigiSpark. It's a small and affordable development board. It has a little computer chip on board that you can program. It doesn't have much power, but the smart people behind the DigiSpark still found a way to make this programmable through the Arduino IDE, and more importantly, make it act as a USB keyboard. If you want to get one, they are fairly cheap. You can find them at various places, and I will also leave a Amazon affiliate link down below if you want to support this channel. But how does this work? Bad USBs act as USB keyboards to run commands on your computer. Keyboards are trusted devices and will usually be allowed to interface with your computer right away. But because bad USBs are automated, they can type much faster than we could type ourselves on a real keyboard. Bad USBs are programmed using a simple scripting language to describe a sequence of keystrokes that should be sent to the computer. And as soon as the bad USB is then plugged into a target computer, it will follow that script and start typing the keys you specified as fast as it can. And so what it will do to the target computer fully depends on that script. You can use bad USBs for testing the security of your computers to learn about vulnerabilities and teach others, but also automate specific tasks. I imagine a administrator who has to set up dozens of new computers might benefit from a tool that they can just plug in and run specific routines. But of course, you can also abuse them to create harm and damage by stealing data or installing malware. Obviously, I won't show you how to do that, but we have to learn about these vulnerabilities and test for them to get a deeper understanding of such technologies. Otherwise, this knowledge only lays in the hands of bad actors and you won't be able to protect yourself. By the way, if you want to learn more about hacking and what it really is about, then check out my video, What Even Is Hacking? But enough talking, let's create a bad USB ourselves. First of all, for this tutorial, we need a DigiSpark and a computer with a USB port, of course. And luckily for you, I made a really cool tool that makes the whole process of creating a bad USB and running scripts on the DigiSpark a lot easier than it was uh, before. So visit duckify.hoon.me. The link is also in the video description. And on the left, you can enter your bad USB script. If you're new to writing scripts, I will put a very simple example in here. The script will wait one second, press the Windows and R key simultaneously to open the run menu, then enter notepad, Press enter and then type hello world. You can also try to follow the script by hand on your computer and you will see that it basically just opens the Windows notepad and, and types in hello world. Keep in mind that this is just an example and it's made for Windows. But yeah, this is basically what it does. And the default delay 200 says that between each line of the script, there should be a 200 millisecond delay and that's necessary because otherwise the computer might not react in time and the bad USB would type out hello world already before notepad was even opened. So depending on your computer, you might need to adjust this delay and put it to 500, for example. Once you entered your script, then you can adjust the settings at the bottom. For example, to make it compatible to a specific keyboard layout, I have translated a ton of layouts here, as you can see, including those for macOS. I recommend you also give this script a name. 
now you can click convert and if there are no errors you will get a arduino sketch that you can flash onto your digispark click on the little icon here to download the script and if you already have arduino installed then you can now just simply open this sketch but if you haven't done anything like that before, then keep watching. I will now go through all the necessary steps to get your DigiSpark up and running with Arduino IDE. Download the Arduino IDE from the Arduino website if you haven't already and install it. Once that's finished, open it up. By default, Arduino IDE won't be able to support our DigiSpark, but we can add support for it by going to File, Preferences, Additional Boards Manager URLs, and then paste this link, which you can copy from the video description. Then click OK to save it and close the Preferences window. What we just did is tell Arduino where to find the board definition of the DigiSpark, but we haven't actually installed the DigiSpark package yet. To do that, we have to go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, and now we can search for DigiSpark and install the DigiStump AVR package. If you're using Windows, you probably also need to install drivers. Otherwise, your DigiSpark won't be detected. I will have them linked in the video description. So click on that link, download the drivers and install them before you continue. All right, now we should be ready to go. But before we continue flashing our bad USB script, it's a good idea to test if everything is working by flashing an example sketch. So go to Tools, Board, Digistorm Boards and select DigiSpark. Now go to File, Examples, DigiSpark Examples, Blink. You should now have the Blink example sketch open. It's basically the Hello World equivalent for embedded programming. And to upload it, hit the Upload button in the top left. Now have a close look at the output at the bottom. It will tell you when to plug in your DigiSpark. So once it does, do that and after a couple of seconds, it should have successfully uploaded the example sketch and your DigiSpark should start blinking. One thing to keep in mind for the DigiSpark is that it is only programmable within six seconds after plugging it in. This is because it first goes into a bootloader mode where it will wait for and accept new firmware. If no firmware upload is initiated, it will leave this bootloader mode after six seconds and run the last firmware you have installed. This is why you have to plug in the DigiSpark when the output window tells you to. If you already plugged it in beforehand and it's no longer in this bootloader mode when Arduino tries to upload your code, it will fail. But okay, you should have the blinking example running by now. And if yes, then great, you can now program the DigiSpark. Uh, you can actually program it with whatever you want. You can start exploring Arduino and other examples if you want, but we can also continue with our tutorial. So let's upload our downloaded script. Simply open it in Arduino IDE. It might ask you to move it into a folder, that's fine. And then make sure the DigiSpark is still selected under Tools and Board Menu. And then, yeah, just hit upload and plug in your DigiSpark. And after the successful upload, it should start running your code. Here we have our hello world. Now that you have everything set up, changing the script is really easy. You simply edit your bad USB script in Duckify, convert it and upload it again to the DigiSpark. The nice thing about Duckify is that you can write bad USB script, which is compatible to DuckyScript, and it will take care of most keyboard layout issues that you usually have. So you can easily search for scripts online and just use them straight away on your DigiSpark. You can find a written tutorial of everything I've shown you here by clicking on Docs. There's also a reference to the scripting language. And if this got you interested in bad use piece, I made a beginner friendly online course about the entire topic. It's perfect for absolute beginners that want to learn about hacking. Check out learnbadusb.com and use the code DuckyFi at checkout to get 20% off. I have made dozens of free and open source projects and more are in development. So buying something from me directly is always the best way to support my work. But all right, that's enough. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Leave a comment down below if you did. Check out my other projects. All the links are in the video description. And yeah, I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye bye.